YouTube, Jordan here. Welcome back to Finding Entities on Any Game Part 2. And in the last video, we left off talking about uh, inherent inheritance, I believe. So we created a entity class, and then we went ahead and created a bunch of um, objects using the entity class. So if you haven't seen that video, I suggest you go back to part one and um, then follow up with this one. And um, so, like I said, we left off at inheritance. So since the last video, I went ahead and add some values, um, X, Y, and Z. This is for our player position. And then I went ahead and add two more, two new classes. Um, got one class called Big Brain and uh, this should say class not public so let me fix that real quick okay so we got a class called little brain we got a class named big brain now you see this little colon followed by this uh, public little brain here what that basically mean is big brain is gonna inherit all the stuff from little brain so you see how little brain little brain has uh, three basic functions it could see you can hear and it could feel so my entire thought process when I made this um, when I uh, made this little brain class um, it's kinda you know comparing us to like other creatures and stuff like um, you know, a little brain, what kind of thing have a little brain, you know, um, let's see, what, what, what's, what animal can I compare, um, so, I, I guess a vast majority of animals really, you know, any animal could do these basic, uh, functions here, you know, every animal could at least see, they could at least hear things, and they could feel things, but then us, you know, we're more complex creatures, so, we could also count numbers, we could say our ABCs, you know, we could store memory of our loved ones and stuff. So this little brain class here, that's really if you, um, you'd use this little brain class if you're dealing with, you know, some something that's not as intelligent. And then you, you I've created this big brain class for, uh, you know, more, um, you know, to, to do actions that require, uh, you know a more complex brain basically so um, big brain inherit all these basic functions from little brain so big brain would also be able to see hear and feel and on top of being able to do all that stuff it's able to count you know say ABC save memory and so when I made this entity class now this entity class um, inherits from big brain so now the entity class could um it could save memory it could say abc's it could count it could feel it could hear and it could see okay just to kind of give you guys an example um, um it's not really practical or anything like that it's just a really simple example and so um I was reading on this uh website i believe the document was um it was on open RCE I'll put the link in the description it was just kind of explaining how objects look in uh, memory um, how classes and objects look in memory after you, uh, you create them in C++ and so after reading that um, article which I'll link in the description I kind of came up with my own little uh, structure here of you know how you know, and and any or finding an entity entity list might work. So, um, you'd have a global, or you know, a static, a static uh, address, and that's you basically want to find a static address that points to the entity list. And within that entity list, you're gonna have all the players in the game. So you're gonna have Prince, which is me, and then you're gonna have Bob, and then you're gonna have Carla, of course. And Bob and Carla, since they derive from the same class, which is this entity here, it, it's set up would look similar to what's inside of Prince Oblivion right now. So this is how 
Bob and Carla looks. Um, this is what's highlighted. I just didn't want to copy and paste the same thing into them, but that's basically essentially how they look, okay? So, normally, um, whenever you're trying to find an entity, you'll start off by, you, you know, you find that you, you start off by finding the basic functions, okay? So, uh, let's say, let's see, how can I put this? Let's say, um, let's say in the game, you know, let's say in the game you, you fell off the roof or something, okay? Or, you know, some, some kind of action, uh, some kind of touch, some player collide with you or something like that, okay? And let's say there was a value, a boolean maybe, and every time, you t you know, a player touch you, then that value was 1, and that player doesn't touch you, then the value is 0. So you kind of imagine you kind of do a next scan, you know, you do a scan with that for cheat engine, and then you finally find that variable, this, the, some, you know, for feelings. And so, basically, what you do, you trace, you trace from there, and go all the way up, until you find uh, the static address, um, which points to all your entities, and then you could just kind of go through the entity list to find other players. So that was just kind of a, a you know, a um, little background on how it works, but I'm more of a visual learner, and I'm sure some of you guys are too. So rather than talking about it, I'm going to show it in action, and then I'm just going to kind of apply our, uh, I'm going to apply it once we get to that point so to start off um, I'm gonna go ahead and find the player um, the players y-axis and so um, real quick I'm gonna stop the video and once I find that I'm gonna continue it so give me one second